She never got love. She never got hugs. She was never told she was pretty or smart. She was constantly on eggshells. She lived in fear of the person she loved the most. I talk with such detachment because of the pain that I never healed from during this period. You make my life a misery. I can't stand you. Fat bitch. Ugly bitch. Nasty bitch. These are the words that were almost like an anthem in my ears. I had heard them over and over from the person I loved the most. So much that they had almost become normal to me. I remember sobbing quietly in my room. Back and legs covered with welts from the broom, belt, shoes, fists, whatever she could find at the time. I remember my room torn in shreds and having to pick up the pieces as best as I could. I remember praying to God at night that he would come and take me to heaven so mommy could be happy again. I felt the pain as if I was still that little girl and my heart broke from her. Are you sure it's your mom? Why don't you flee from that house? If I were you, I'll suffocate her in a sleep. All sorts of advice which a six-year-old was not supposed to get kept coming each time she stepped out of the house. My name is Ellie Nelson. I am 25 years old. And my profession is making the world a better place by touching lives. It may sound weird, but allow me to tell my story first. Before we continue with the story, do not forget to click on the notification button in order to be able to get notified at every new video posted. Thank you. I was born into a beautiful couple, Mr. and Mrs. Nelson. We were twins, a boy and a girl. I came first and my brother came second. When he came out, the doctors noticed that he was breathing very slowly and then they decided to run some tests on him. They say that he had developed rare respiratory problems because of his position in the womb. Something like I was taking more space and exerting pressure on his chest. I weighed 4 kilograms at birth and he was just weighing 2 kilograms. He was immediately rushed to the emergency unit and placed on oxygen. While I was fine and very healthy, my brother was still struggling on oxygen. After running many tests on my brother, the doctors finally decided that only an operation could help him, but again, he was too small for that kind of operation. My parents were going to have to wait for two years. My mother could not help it. She asked them why wait for two years if there was no other solution to save her baby, but the doctor said no. The truth is, they could not really place a finger on what was happening to my brother, so their proposed solutions were just approximate. The pain almost killed mom, but she kept on hoping and counting days. The situation cost my parents their mental health, their finances, and their happiness. My mother was living in the hospital and refused to even step a foot out of her son's room. She would sing lullabies for him day in, day out. After a year of waiting, my brother finally gave up the ghost in his unconscious state. I think that was the day my mom literally died. She took him in her arms and refused to let anyone touch him and kept singing for him saying that he was just asleep. It took hours. The doctors finally had to inject her with some medication to put her to sleep before they could take my brother away. When she woke up to realize that it was true, she lost her ability to speak for weeks. When she returned home, dad tried as much as possible to make mom talk. He even tried to make her understand that at least God did not take the two of us. He left me. God has nothing to do with this. This witch killed my son. These were the first words that my mother repeated for months. Time went on and my father asked her to see a psychologist, but it was a no. Time passed by and I was soon to celebrate my second birthday. My father went to work one day, leaving me at home with my mom, which was quite unusual. He always took me to his factory with him. The workers there loved me more than my mom did. This famous day, he received a call, and since I was asleep, he rushed out, hoping that he won't be long. A few hours upon returning, my father found me still asleep, which was quite unusual. As he checked on me, he noticed a foamy substance running down my mouth. He rushed me to the hospital and it was found out that I had swallowed fungicide. My mom lied that she accidentally gave it to me when trying to give me a cough syrup. The doctors did an internal flush of my system but the product had burned and damaged my digestive tract. I spent months in the hospital and was operated upon three times. At the end, the doctors said that I needed an operation in which a pipe would be placed in my throat to help ease the digestion for the rest of my life. 
The problem was that I was too small. It could only be conducted on children from the age of 10 upwards. So while I was waiting, my father took me to the hospital every six months for the doctors to open the digestive tract. It was so painful, but the process was eased up by my dad's love and affection. Because of my treatment, I put on weight, which was very normal, but my mother turned it into a form of mockery. At times, I could overhear her telling my father to stop wasting his money on me and let me die. At the end, she left the house. My father tried to bottle up his emotion in these years since he had no one to open up to. And with time, he turned into an alcoholic, though he was just trying to hide his emotions. When I finally went through the operation, it was a success. He regained hope and started struggling to stop alcohol. But two years later, he was seriously sick and was diagnosed with cancer of the liver. My mother suddenly showed up from where she was and came back pretending to care for him so that she could inherit properties in case of death. Eventually, he died after a few months. This was the worst pain I had ever felt. My mother played the perfect widow role, organizing a huge funeral ceremony and all the fancy stuff. Two weeks after the burial, my father's lawyer came and read his will, and my mother had nothing except from the house in which we lived. From that day, she was bent on making my life miserable. She made me pay for the rent in my room, pay for bills, do all the house chores, cook for both of us, and run very odd errands. She would bring men into the house and have fun forgetting that I was still living there. Anytime I tried complaining, she would rain insults on me and beat me up severally. After some years, I moved to the factory and began living there. It was easier for me to control everything with the help of Dad's lawyer. At the end of it, I did well in school and finally finished with a master's degree in health science so as to better understand the health condition which my brother suffered from before dying. I got a job in a neighboring city, but twice a week I drove to the factory to find out how things were going. I hear that my mom has been trying to get in touch with me, but I don't think I'm ready to meet her. My forgiveness is all I can afford.